Readers, if we, as we have studied different genres this year, we've been learning so much about ourselves as readers, as well as about genres, how authors write, and so much more. Some topics we've read in this unit of study have been about Coach Gators, who changed the lives of her players on and off the court. So this was our narrative nonfiction. It read like fiction, but it's all true. We've also read about stunt performers who put themselves in danger to entertain us. So this was our nonfiction text. Now, I imagine that some of the passages you may have found more interesting or easier to read than another. So the good news is that sometimes on a test, if you don't like one passage or article, there are others that might interest you. But no matter what, whether you like the topic or not, we must persevere in using our strategies. Just like I had to do a few weeks ago when uh, I was trying to shovel and the snowplow came, you know, I had to work hard and I had to make the best of the decision. So today... Um, as we get ready for our final bend, we're going to have to remember that our brains are going to hold on to what we've already learned about nonfiction reading and how to use those skills when answering multiple choice questions. And now we're going to get excited for refocusing on fiction. The next sessions are going to focus on realistic fiction. So today I want to teach you that fiction readers expect characters to face problems. They notice what problems characters face and they notice how characters react to these problems. So as we're reading narrative nonfiction, we're going to pay attention to four things. We want to track the character's problems um, and their reactions to certain problems. We want to notice a pattern, so if they're constantly reacting the same way or doing the same thing, we want to pay attention to a pattern in our character's behavior because that can tell us a lot about our character. We want to notice how they end up solving their biggest problem. And we also want to determine what lessons our character has learned. So today we're going to take a look at our next passage. We should have already listened to it. Um, and now you have a copy of it in front of you as well. So this passage is called Excerpt from Trading Places. So let's just take a look at what the passage looks like. So the directions say, read this story. Then we're going to have some conversations. Um, I see as we started reading, there was a mom who came in. She's talking to her family. Um, I see there's some conversation about, it seems like she's a little mad and they're getting in trouble because down here somewhere they compared them to um, like a, a dog if they had um, their tail be between their legs because they're in trouble. So it looks like they're in trouble. Um, I noticed there was a diagram about a food pyramid and, I, and in previewing some of the conversation, I saw that they were maybe talking about the food pyramid, pyramid a little bit. So there's a lot of conversation going back and forth. Um, the characters seem like they could be real people. They, this may be a made-up story, but we have characters who are created to kind of seem a lot like us, characters we can relate to. Um, there was a problem as I was going through there, and they had to work to find a solution, and at the end they came together to kind of come up with that solution. So as I'm reading this, it actually really got me thinking about my story mountain. I'm going to draw a little version of that here. Um, because I feel like I was really able to track the pieces of this. We know we start with an introduction and then things start to build up until we have a big problem or a big climax and then we work to kind of solve them. So as we're going through our story mountain, we know in the beginning um, we're in, in a house. Mom comes in and kind of yells at the family because the house was a mess. Um, so everyone kind of feels like they're in trouble. Um, we're building up, building up until mom finally says, you need to cook dinner and it needs to include all pieces of the food pyramid. So mom is super mad. Mom has been doing all of the work on her own. Nobody's helping. So she's like, whatever, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go upstairs and relax in the bathtub. You guys need to figure out dinner and you have one hour to do it. So during this part, I mean, they are searching through cookbooks. They're plot problem solving together. Um, they are pulling together and cooking dinner. 
And at the end, mom is surprised. Like, she did not actually think that they were going to pull it off. So it seems like as we're tracking characters, what is happening is the kids and the family and the dad, it seems like they're not really helping out at home. So if we're kind of tracking problems, it seems like mom has had this problem over and over again, and she's finally just, like, snapping. Like, okay, you guys need to stop. Um... And so she resolves this problem by saying, it's your turn. You need to take care of this. Um, and I think in the end, she was a little bit surprised. And I think if we flip that and we pay attention to the other characters, it seems like their problems and their pattern of behavior, they've been consistently leaving the house dirty. They never help with dinner. They leave everything up to mom. So I think they learn that she does need help and they learn that they've kind of been wrong this whole time so they resolve the problem by finally pitching in and they help out so I feel like a test maker could ask me anything about this we've got a realistic fiction so it reads like a true story um it's you know it's something that we can relate to it's a situation that really could happen even though these characters are made up and I think a test maker might ask me a question about Story Mountain. You know, what happened in the beginning, middle, and end? What was the problem in the story? What was the solution? They could be asking me what the characters learned. I think a test maker could also ask me about how characters react to problems. Or maybe they'll ask me what kind of person is mom or the kids or something like that. Um, and it can ask me what did my character learn? So now it's going to be your turn. Um, as you read your independent books today, I want you to be thinking about what might a test ask about this text. So whatever book you're reading, what might a test maker ask you? And how would you use your reading strategies to support your thinking? So that's something we'll be able to talk about later. But for now, keep a list in your reading notebook. What might a test maker ask you about your independent reading book? Happy reading.